I believe in natural gas as a clean, cheap alternative uh, to fossil fuel. I noticed that although their beakers had been heating on Bunsen burners all through class, the glass on the bottom was still absolutely clear and clean. No dirt or smudge marks, no streaks or spots. It was a perfect example of the way gas cooking keeps your own pots and pans clean. The only byproducts you get from burning gas are water vapor and carbon dioxide, two things that are in the air already, and the very same byproducts that result just from breathing. And that is why you can take a tea kettle like this that's been boiling for half an hour over gas, rub a handkerchief on the bottom, and look, perfectly clean. Natural gas, the clean, modern, dependable fuel. How does this family increase energy efficiency without sacrificing comfort? Simple. They use natural gas everywhere they can. Since natural gas conserves energy and can reduce greenhouse gases by up to 70%, they've joined the nearly 2 million Floridians who enjoy it every day. Growing a cleaner, greener future for the ones who matter most. Go to peoplesgas.com slash enjoy and see if you qualify for up to $1,750 in rebates. Tico People's Gas wants you to live clean and green with natural gas. When you turn on the stove to make a meal, you probably aren't thinking about climate change. But major cities across the country are passing bans on gas stoves and other appliances that run on natural gas because of their planet warming emissions. It's a big deal because nearly 187 million Americans use natural gas in their homes. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy tells us why the fight to save the planet could be coming to a kitchen near you. At Darrow's New Orleans Grill in Carson, California. You got your fresh catfish fried. You can count on a warm welcome. This is what you've been waiting for all week. A hot fryer and that signature blue flame burning on the stovetop. We've always used gas. All these recipes are gas related. Norwood Clark Jr. has been cooking with gas for decades. He's worried that a growing number of bans on gas appliances in California could impact his plans to open a new restaurant near Los Angeles' football stadium. This is going to put a major, major wrench in those plans. When you change the cooking style, you change the makeup of the product itself. I can't see any legitimate chef out there turning to electric. I don't see it. Really? I don't see it, Ben. About 80 local governments have passed laws requiring or encouraging new homes and businesses to use electric rather than natural gas appliances. Burning natural gas in these settings accounts for about 13% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. Natural gas in these settings accounts for about 13% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. Hi, my name is Leanne Merzik. I am the Fuels Management Specialist for Oregon and Washington BLM. Prescribed fire is just another tool in resource management that we use to uh, reach our resource management objectives, such as uh, ecosystem restoration, um, forest health, restoring fire back on the landscape as it was historically. And also prescribed fire is used to um, reduce the fuels that we thinned in the understory to help uh, reduce the impacts from wildland fire. There are certain objectives. In some cases, if you're within the wildland urban interface, the main objective may just be hazardous fuels reduction. The idea behind that is when a wildfire goes through a wild urban interface area, um, in the summer, it helps protect that community. Another uh, objective of prescribed burning is ecosystem restoration type work. Uh, like on the east side of the Cascades, for example, there's a lot of work going on for habitat restoration for sage grouse. Um, that's a really a big piece of prescribed burning. It's, a, it's a, an effort on all fronts. It's not just the BLM reducing fuels. They're working with their communities to protect them um, as a whole. Just recently, 
the BLM has put up a website for Oregon and Washington that uh, is accessible by the public and they can go and look and see if a burn is happening in their uh, neighborhood. And there is a great site to go to, it's called Firewise and uh, it's a wonderful site for homeowners to get information on how to protect their homes. When you see smoke in the spring or winter or fall months, it's usually we're, we're, we're conducting a prescribed fire. Um, be reassured that there are professionals who are conducting these prescribed burns who go through many years of training prior to becoming a burn boss and implementing these prescribed fires. And a lot of work and effort goes into ensuring that the prescribed burns are conducted in a safe manner. The largest component of it is methane, which is 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide at warming the planet. So there's actually not that much about natural gas that's natural. Leah Guccione is with RMI, a Colorado-based clean energy organization. So we're, a, we're a small cooperative, we're not-for-profit. We have roughly 11,000 members, customers, and the Coventry Landfill Project is our anchor power supply resource that serves our membership. Um, so we have roughly 11,000 members. The power plant serves over half of the energy needs of our membership. This is a baseload resource. It runs 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. It's on all the time. And as we go through the plant, you'll see we have five engines, so they're modular. So when one is offline for maintenance, the other four are still running. So literally, constantly, there's electricity being produced here. This is the cheapest resource in our mix. It's six cents a kilowatt hour. This power is really affordable. So I like to describe the plant in five stages or five like different components. So the landfill and the extraction of gas off the landfill is stage one. So there are several wells that are drilled into the actual landfill itself. And there's over 80 to 90 wells and we collect all the gas through those wells into one pipe and they come into a staging area outside the Coventry plant itself. So there's actually not that much about natural gas that's natural. And that's where the actual treatment of the gas begins. Uh, the gas comes into a great big tank. And there's a, there's a big, you know, large underground tank and there's a knockout the gas comes into and condensate starts to happen in this tank. So basically, um, as the gas is collected, it essentially becomes naturally compressed. We collect all that gas, it's really, really hot inside this pipe, it goes into a big tank underground, and we get this condensate, so basically water particles start to drip off the gas, and the, the rest of the gas comes into the building. She knows the fight over gas stoves has become a flashpoint. 20 states have passed laws prohibiting bans on gas appliances, arguing that by itself, Cooking with natural gas in homes amounts to just 0.1% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. There are going to be a lot of people who don't like this. Mm -hmm. They like their gas stove. Do you worry about turning some people off to the larger climate issues that we're trying to combat as a society for something that is relatively small? I think that's a valid concern. Really what we need to think about is eliminating all of the fossil gas appliances from our home. So not just the stove, but also our furnaces, our water heaters. If we have a gas powered dryer, the climate science is showing us that we have almost no time to waste. At this Denver home, researchers from Stanford are studying the impacts. They say gas stoves produce planet warming pollution equal to half a million gas powered cars each week. Natural gas can also raise levels of nitrogen dioxide in homes, potentially causing respiratory issues, including asthma. Asthma is now being blamed on natural gas stoves. Despite the fact that natural gas residential use had already been well established and common in homes decades before asthma cases went up exponentially in the 80s and 90s. The total number of children suffering from this chronic disease increased by 75% between 1980 and 1994. The illness has grown fastest among the youngest children 
The number of children under five years of age with asthma surged by 160% during that same time period. Potentially causing respiratory issues, including asthma. When you guys went in there and turned on the burners, how quickly did that reach a limit that's considered unhealthy? It took about uh, six minutes for the nitrogen dioxide level to, to reach that EPA threshold. These pollutants really do have negative effects on our health. Natural gas is safe, it's affordable, it's clean. The Natural Gas Association disagrees with Stanford's findings. It says it's working to reduce emissions and that most consumers simply can't afford thousands of dollars to switch to electric appliances. So at the end of the day, this is a very expensive proposition for very little environmental gain. What can I get for you, man? Norwood Clark Jr. says he cares about climate change, but if he's ever forced to replace his gas stove... I'll shut it down, because I'm not going to compromise the flavor. You close your business? I'll close it down. Really? I, I really would. And that's why the debate over those little blue flames is so hot. That chicken is amazing. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Los Angeles. <laughs> he sounded pretty serious, guys. He said he would close it down. Now, you all know I don't cook, but chefs have told me that it, you can cook better with gas. I do not know. Sometimes the temperature, it's something the to think about. that the is required for certain dishes is yeah. best with gas. That's what I've heard. But we are messing up the planet. I care more about the planet, yes, I have to say. Exactly. Natural gas is the cleanest of fossil fuels. It's not like the other carbon fuels that are hazardous to our environment. When used to generate electricity, natural gas burns cleaner than any other fuel source with less pollutants and no mercury. When burned, natural gas produces about 45% less carbon dioxide than coal, about 30% less than oil, and about 15% less than wood. You know, there's a lot of talk about renewable energy, use of biofuels, the sun and the wind as sources. Yet if we maximized the use of all potential renewable sources, the amount of energy generated would fulfill a very small portion of our need and would have absolutely no impact on increasing our energy independence. And renewables can only provide minimal help in cleaning our environment. It's not that we should not find ways to use these renewable sources. It's simply not enough. What happens when the sun sets and the wind dies down? Natural gas is the safe, affordable, abundant support for solar and wind and is the most cost efficient, clean energy source for homes and commercial and industrial buildings. Choosing natural gas automatically lowers your reliance on electric utilities that burn coal or inefficiently uses natural gas to make that electricity. By doing so, you'll personally help lower carbon emissions, smog and acid rain. You'll also create fewer greenhouse gases, doing your part to slow or reduce the effects of global climate change. Now, when we think of how much pollution of our environment comes from transportation, we know we have to do something to reduce emissions. Natural gas vehicles or NGVs can have a direct positive impact on America's air quality and environment today. Natural gas vehicles emit 25% less CO2 than automobiles that run on diesel or gasoline. In addition to carbon dioxide reductions, NGVs also emit less carbon monoxide, non-methane organic gas, and nitrogen oxides. Overall, NGVs improve air quality through dramatic reductions in emissions. So why are we all not driving natural gas vehicles? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The infrastructure simply hasn't been built yet. There are over 1,100 natural gas stations in the U.S as compared to more than 200,000 gasoline stations. That's quite a comparison. That means we need more natural gas stations to power even a small portion of our vehicles. There's new interest in adding natural gas pumps to existing stations. Fleet owners are beginning to install their own stations. And now there's a home fueling option that will allow NGV owners to refuel at home at night while they're sleeping. Several automobile manufacturers, Ford, Honda, BMW, Mercedes, Volvo, Volkswagen, Dodge, and many others are building passenger cars, vans, buses, and trucks that run on natural gas. Yet most of them are being purchased and driven in other countries, even though the cost is less than half the cost of gasoline and offers an even greater savings when compared to diesel. And it's much cleaner. Remember, America has more natural gas than any other country. 
Yet with the growing demand, it's projected that more than 15% of our natural gas will be imported from countries other than Canada and Mexico by 2025. Puzzling, isn't it? Well, it's time to solve the puzzle. Tell everyone you meet about the important truths about natural gas and how expanded production and increased use can have a major impact, not only on our economy and independence, but can also help eliminate troublesome emissions that are destroying our environment. As a public gas company with limited resources, Charlottesville Gas knew it was necessary to rely on a creative approach for their recent ad campaign. The solution came in the form of a blue friendly flame, their mascot, Flicker the Flame. The following TV spot, Gas Safety 101, promoted clean and safe natural gas. Be gas safety smart with Flicker the Flame. Learn how to detect the gas leak. Look for blowing dirt. Listen for an unusual hissing sound near appliances. Smell for a rotten egg-like odor. If you notice any of these signs, take action right away. Leave the area immediately. Do not turn appliances or lights on or off. And call Charlottesville Gas or 911. Remember, before you dig, you must call Miss Utility. Help Flicker keep our community safe. Charlottesville Gas. Green and safe. I think natural gas to a certain degree over the years has suffered from an identity crisis. Uh, at one point we have become the and industry, it's oil and gas. And so we are working to try to educate people, be they legislators at the state or federal level or regulators about the difference in natural gas from some of the other carbon fuels and what you need to do to understand the role that natural gas can play in the future of America's energy policy. It's very significant, I think, given the fact that we have the supplies that we have, we have a lot of the infrastructure already built, but we have so much more to do. I think the, um, the biggest issue for the natural gas industry is, is educating the public, the Americans, on the benefits of natural gas. Uh, we all that are in the industry are very close to our supply situation, but the average American doesn't realize that we have an abundant resource here in the United States. Uh, they also don't realize that it's a very safe industry, that, that uh, we've got a great uh, safety record as an industry. They don't, they don't uh, have an appreciation for the efficiency of the industry. Um, just to give you an example, um, heating, um, heating our homes, cooking, heating our commercial buildings with natural gas is far more efficient than electricity. You lose um, almost 70 percent of the energy um, when you try to take that energy and make electricity. It's lost in the generation, transmission, and delivery. Um, also, it's clean burning. And you can almost see it, how clean it is just by its blue, blue flame. Um, but a lot of folks don't realize that it is very clean and good, you know, actually a good uh, energy source, uh, far less pollutants than a lot of the other uh, fossil fuels. As natural gas employees, you are the absolute best ambassadors for this great source of energy. In fact, many of you are already excelling at communicating our important message. There's never been a better time for natural gas. Let me say that again. There's never been a better time for natural gas. It's abundant. It's affordable, American and clean. Natural gas is the best energy solution. To me, the, the way to communicate natural gas is to follow the P's of, of marketing that we all know. It's a fantastic product. It's clean. It's safe. It's efficient. It's domestic. It's very economical, particularly with the shale plays. So making sure that employees know those crisp messages is essential because you have to know the product before you can sell it effectively. Second, um, the promotion. We really try to emphasize all the various channels that we have at our disposal from texting and SMS to, to internet and the typical outdoor advertising, TV, radio, um, person to person. It's, it's all good in terms of how we communicate. We just need to continue to innovate and be creative. I look really at the natural gas ambassador for companies like ours as not only uh, people who can talk to other people and share with them about the benefits of natural gas, but people who carry the brand of our company and our industry. And certainly we uh, have great ambassadors out there and it's everything from when they stop by the side of the road with somebody who's got a flat tire to helping a customer who might have a gas leak. And at the same time, uh, 
sharing with them uh, the value that our company and our product bring to the marketplace. So it's everything from a conversation in someone's home about why natural gas for heating or water heating or cooking or clothes drying, uh, all the way to someone who just happened to see one of our trucks go by and stopped and helped and built that brand value for uh, why we're a great product and a great company. We have directors of first impression of our companies and of our product on the ground in talking to our customers and our, in our customer contact centers, as well as the service techs, the meter readers, and it is our responsibility as an industry and as companies to really equip all of these folks uh, with the information that is so prevalently available in the industry today. I mean, our product has never been better. We have never enjoyed a, more, a, a better time for natural gas. It is clean, as everybody knows. It beats hands down the coal and uh, the oil and all the other fossil fuels. It's affordable. Obviously, you know, it's dropped by 50 percent over the since 2008. So it's an extremely affordable product in our the consumer has enjoyed, <clears throat> excuse me, the consumer has enjoyed uh, and benefited from the, the reduction in natural gas prices by not experiencing any increase in their bills over the last three winter heating seasons. So that's another thing that we need to to, to make very, very well known to our, our employees so they can communicate this. Uh, it's, it's abundant. Lord, we've got a hundred years of, of supply out there. There's, again, I mean, it's so plentifully available. People don't have to worry about our product, you know, not being available. And for, for the next century, we'll have enough natural gas and probably much more than that as we continue to develop uh, the unconventional shale play source, sources that are out there. Um, finally, <clears throat> it's American, and, and that's extremely important because right now, uh, when you talk about oil and the dependence on foreign oil and the, and the impact on national security, um, natural gas, again, brings us back to, to an all-American product. And finally, I mean, it's a fundamental food group that is necessary for a healthy economy. And obviously, I mean, natural gas, we, I think, uh, can be, you know, the, the superhighway back to the restoration of a healthy and vibrant economy if we continue to, to make available all of the wonderful uses that, is, that it has. I think our employees can become great ambassadors for natural gas uh, three ways. One is we need to give them information. There are tremendous benefits of natural gas, as we all know, in the industry, but sometimes employees, often employees, get caught up doing their primary job, which is marketing or operations or sales. and we need to arm them with just crisp information about the attributes of natural gas. Second, we need to give them the tools. Uh, maybe it's leave behind, maybe it's a video, maybe it's uh, um, you know just an outline of how they can give an elevator speech if they have a 20 second opportunity with somebody that says, tell me about what you do and why natural gas is something I should be interested in. And third, I think um, just making employees feel comfortable that that's something that we we encourage and that we want them to do. I think sometimes, again, people get pigeonholed in their thinking a little bit, and we want them to expand and really extol the virtues of, of the product that we have to offer.